Uh, greetings, I'm Dr. Les Spencer, and this is an opportunity for you to hear from a number of people from the Southeast Asian Oceania Australasia region that have had the uh, experience of being able to help each other when they had major mental strife in their lives. And this is uh, quite a, uh, a potent story that may have uh, major application uh, for... Uh, um, I'm from King Lake in Victoria. Uh, I was uh, directly impacted by the Black Saturday firestorm. I uh, just want to briefly talk about some of the programs that we put in place after the fires to support one another. Uh, one of the most extraordinary was the peer support program. Uh, we identified about 30 people in the community who we knew were natural networkers and natural nurturers and provided them training in mental health and mental health first aid. What was fantastic about the program was just how incredibly well these people did supporting their peers. So each of them supported up to 10 people. Um, My name's Anthony. I was involved in um, the firestorm at King Lake in 2009. And uh, Les wanted me to tell you about um, the community groups that came together after the fire. Uh, a lot of us were in, um, were really devastated, you know, after losing our houses and, you know, friends and family. Um, but the various community groups that came together were really powerful and dynamic and where, often where there was individuals who were devastated and could barely function for their own needs, would come together in these groups and work really effectively. Um, you know, for a common purpose, and it was quite a phenomenon, really, to see um, these people who were really devastated, who were on their knees, in community groups, being incredibly effective. Um, so we were sort of exalted, in a way, you know, in our coming together on various projects. There was a community dining project, which was... Um, you know, really fantastic in our recovery. We'd all get together and have dinner and provide food for a lot of the community. There was hundreds of meals made every night. Uh, and of course that tapered off, but you know, as the years went by. Um, and there was other groups lob uh, lobbying for support for the community. And anyway, as a whole, the community was really effective and good but the individuals often would be very messy. You know, it's been very difficult. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, currently we're at, at uh, St Andrew's Market here where people come together. And this is only about five miles as the crow's, uh, crow flies uh, from where it was a complete wipeout of a whole community of people. And uh, this is also another thing that um, Anthony does. Many people think gardens are a chore, but for me, they're a real pleasure and they've helped me deal with uh, a few issues I've had with uh, pretty bad stress and depression. So, these beautiful girls and working the soil here in our wonderful garden really makes you understand what's important in life and it takes you back to the roots and it's very relaxing and calming. So, on days when I'm up, whoa, on days when I'm upset or stressed out, I come out and chase the girls and get my hands in the soil and feel that connection back to real things of the earth. Good morning. I'm Alex Dawia from Bougainville. Currently, I'm here at St. Andrews with Anthony and Dr. Spencer. And I just want to tell you about what we did in Philippines. 
we had 11 natural enablers, healers, who were there talking about the mutual health that is happening throughout Southeast Asia. And it is happening because of the natural naturals. And less, and I still working here also with the Bougainville community, with the West Papua, and also the Keen Lake community who went through stress and hardship. And people just getting together and doing something without any government support or anybody telling them this is what you do. So we are used to this sort of thing. It is happening all over Southeast Asia and Bougainville and West Papua, wherever. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> uh, they can tell us the story. If something is hiding of this story, we try to give another example, uh, some illustrations that, uh, yeah, that what that happened to you already happened to us also because we also are survivors yeah. so this is the way when the trust we oh, it's flexible for them to dance and shake the body and do this do that yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> ah, okay yeah this one uh with the survivors with the victims okay. mm -hmm. And also, how can they know their rights, children's rights? So, if someone, how to say, brutally take my rights, take my ballon, so how, where is my right to have a ballon, the completely ballon? Yeah, so that's the way. This is balance. Yes. This is very much on balance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and people moving. Mm, okay. Yes. There. There's a dance form. And so now, now Cambo kids give children experience in this traditional Khmer dance technique. This activity brings much happiness to the children while supporting their cultural identity and ensuring an important cultural tradition will be reasserted. <laughs> and as you can see, even when it's raining, the playground doesn't close and the children carry on playing. Loving. And back. Sharing. Good. And back. Truth. But it was this little fellow who really began to melt the ice between us. Coming from a deprived background and prone to epilepsy, I think he recognized that I too was an outsider and that he would be my friend. In these idyllic surroundings, it was possible to see clearly the distance these youngsters still had to travel before they would be capable of joining the computerized frenzy of our space age world. <laughs> It is unlikely that my little friend would ever be capable of joining such a world. Or hitting back or anything like that, because he doesn't know. The only little fellow, he can't hurt you, right? Come on. 
Just hang on one hand, man. Right? Sorry, can't throw himself, so he can't hurt himself. But without Jess' help, he had no expectations whatsoever. Petford is this little boy's last chance, but Jeff remains convinced that after just a few months here, he will have him riding with the best of them and fully capable of taking up a job as, say, a stable hand on a large property. Come on, it's not hurting you, Billy. Look, look, it's on my face. Yeah. See, but just undo his shirt button, there, yeah. and just cool his chest down a bit. He's been able to get away with it all his life. Come on, Billy. Come on. Come and on. The easiest way is to just resist it and be calm. You know, not punish him. Come on. But just restrain it. You want a drink? Come on, Come on. You're right. Steady, steady. I'll have to throw this bucket on you if I can't wipe you. You're not throwing a fit, he's bunging on. <coughs> David hit him, and then he threw a stone at Freddy, and Freddy threw a stone back at him, and he went to pieces. Oh, yeah, there we are. Good lad. Drink there, it up. Oh, that's enough. Drink it. That's enough. Drink it. From Swallow good it. Good boy. Swallow it. I don't know. You want a bit more water? Some Come on, you're right. Have a bit more water. Good boy. You've got a dry throat there. There we are. Yeah, Come on, there. you're right. You're down here. How's that? Is that cooling down there? I don't think I'm in. Yeah, right, okay. But, but just take it down this way, so I don't know, that way, so I don't hurt him. Come on. Don't believe you got to hold somebody. Make sure you hold them so they can't mistake it. You're hurting them. And nobody's going to hurt you, right? Go on. You can't lose your temper like this, right? Right? Because you threw the stone first, right? And they shouldn't have thrown the stone back at you. But you can't lose your temper. Can we get another drink of water? That'll help. But he's not actually taking a fit now. He's sort of lost his temper. Now, look, you fellas, you fellas are fortunate. You don't have a problem like this. This lad's a little bit slow. He takes fits. And people have teased him and tormented him all his life. You're right. You're right. Now, if we're going to help him, you've got to help me help him and don't tease him. If he hits you and throws a stone at you, try and talk to him properly instead of being cruel to him. Jeffrey, when you're working with him, you help him and show him. Because aren't you lucky you can do things good? And you know what? He's been everywhere. Just lately, he's been to about 15 different places and they've all turned him back and couldn't help him. Well, don't we want to be able to help him? Yeah. Hey, Jeffrey? Yeah. David? Yeah. Hey, Billy. Hey. All right, there you are, Norma. There's Norma coming now, Billy. Come down the house. Come down the house. And have a rest yeah. for a while. Eh? Billy? Now, don't you feel really lucky that you're not sick like this? You know, he, really, he was really trembling if I was going to hit him when I went up there. Think how fortunate we all are, eh? Sometimes you can have no money, but sometimes you can have no legs. And that's sometimes better than having sickness like this. And most of them have grown up with a bad background. To me, what is important is that whatever the truth may be, Jeff and these youngsters believe their version. So either it was true, or there had been a disastrous breakdown in communications. This is my Aboriginal reserve, and it's supposed to be mine. You can't ship me. They're sort of leaders, and yet they're crushed down. So it's natural their youngsters are leaders in a sense, but felt their parents weren't strong enough, so they're resisting authority. Um, a lot of people say, well, they're only making it hard for himself. But through, throughout the world, uh, a lot of people have bucked authority and believe it.